Me too. I, I love that more than the frowns and other stuff I get. <laughs> so, so. chapter, and is the 17th through the 21st verse. Uh, that's Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. So if you were wondering where that is or needing to look up, but there that's Matthew, Mark, next book is Luke. Or that's page 4, no, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Luke, Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. Now, I have, to, I have to tell you, since we are, this is Advent, and uh, last week, in talking about Advent, one of the main things that we put forward was, Advent is not just during Christmas time. Let me destroy that myth for you. Advent is not just during Christmas time. It is every day. Because Christ is the culmination of hope, <clears throat> love, joy, and peace. And it is in him that that is found. And when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have Advent every day. So please don't think that this is just a Christmas time thing. Right. Just don't think that this is just the time that we get to pull out all the nice, beautiful poinsettias yeah. and, and all the decorations and put this up. It's not just a Christmas thing because that's the problem that we're facing today. Is because not just the world believes that, but the church is believing that today. That's right. They, don't have me preach today, because I will preach today. <laughs> Don't have me preach today, because I will do it. Before we do that, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today. And Father, before I stand in front of your people and proclaim your truth, Father, I come asking, Lord, to be forgiven. Lord, if there's anything that I've done to offend you, if there's anything that I have done, Lord, that has been wrong in your sight, Father, I pray, God, that you would remove that from me, and that I can stand in front of you unashamed and proclaim the truth of your Son Amen. who lives in me, Amen. and Father, who guides me, my heart, my actions, my everything. Amen. Father, may me be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Amen. And I pray for these people, Father, your people, who have placed their faith and their trust in you. Amen. Father, those that may not have placed their faith and trust in you yet, dear Father, Lord, I pray for them also. I pray, God, that before we end this day, before we end this time in worship, in your presence, Father, that God, they would come asking, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to know the Jesus that you know? To know the lover soul. Father, we are your people who are called by your name to do a work which you have created in advance for us to do. Amen. And Father, the work that we have been called to do, Father, is to be your heroes. Father, we are to proclaim the truth of your Son, Jesus Christ, of the fact that he is alive. He is not dead. He is not alive. He is the truth. Father, history screams of the fact that Jesus lived. Amen. Yes. And not only does it scream that he lived, it also screams that he was buried. It also screams that he died on the cross. Okay. But Father, I'm so thankful. Lord, I'm thankful for the fact yes, Lord. Come on. 
that we can go to the place where that tomb is, Father, and Jesus is not there. Yes. He is alive. Amen. He is right now at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for our life. He is our high priest. Thank you, Father, Thank you. that in you, through you, and from you, all blessings flow. Yes. Father, I thank you for the fact, dear God, Lord, that those that have been sick, those that have had surgery, Father, those, dear Father, that have been on the hearts and minds, God, you have been there with them. You have had your hand of protection on them. You've had your hand of healing among them. Father, I thank you, dear Father, for our dear sister Barbara, dear Father, Lord, that yes. you have brought back here, dear Father, Lord, to be with us here, Father. It could have been your will, Lord, that she would not be here but be in your presence today. We understand the magnitude. Jesus, and we understand Jesus. the majesty. And we understand, dear Father, who you are. Amen. We know your power. And Father, we don't know your will. But we are called to do your will. You make your will apparent and known to us. And what is it that you will for us to do? Father, your will that we are called to do oh, is God. to be, to love you, God, with Jesus. all our heart and soul and mind and strength and to love you neighbor as ourself. Yes, Father, what we're also called to do, dear Lord, is to proclaim to everyone of the joy that is found, the love that is found, the hope that is found, the peace that is found in your son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> oh, Father God, we thank you for the fact, God, that in you, through you, from you, all blessings flow. Yes, we thank you also, dear Father, Lord, that you have called us. You deem us worthy of salvation. You deem us worthy to carry this message of hope that has the ability to set the captives free. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the fact, God, that you love us so much that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And Father, that you also, through him, dying on the cross for our sins, being buried, on the third day rising. And Father, right now is at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. Father, that you have given us a promise of eternal life and a life that is lived with you. Thank you, Father, Amen. that we have that promise. Amen. And it's found nowhere else but only through your Son, Jesus Christ. So Father, as we Open up, Lord. And Father, as I stand in front of your people and I proclaim your truth, Father, remove me out of the way. And speak, Lord, for your servants who listen. For we pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for his sake. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are in Luke chapter 4, mm -hmm. verses 17 through 21. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, Every time Advent comes around, I screw the order up. So I'm just going to tell you in advance. So if you say, ooh, that's the wrong stuff, don't work. I'm, I'm here next week. I'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but there's joy in his name. Amen. And that's the title of this message today is that there's joy in his name. So um, in Luke chapter 4, Starting at verse 17, it reads as follows. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, I'm reading from the New King James Version, by that way. Uh, and when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say <coughs> to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He is the bringer of joy. 
Imagine being one, one of the ones that are in the synagogue that day. Just imagine that for a moment. Here's Jesus. And Jesus is handed the scroll from Isaiah. Now, to understand, we don't, he didn't have the Bible as it is now, so it wasn't completed. So he didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Mark, Matthew, Mark, uh, excuse me, Matthew, Luke, and John were right there, you know, when this is going on. So, you know, they, they will record this. So a man that Matthew, Luke, and John would record something of this magnitude that happens. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That, isn't that awesome? The fact that God saw fit that this moment would actually happen. But more so than that, Jesus himself goes to, mm, Lord, I mean, Lord, you doing it now. Come on with it, then. Jesus himself goes to the scroll okay. of Isaiah, and he looks for where God is talking about him. And he reads it. And then, after reading it, he sits down. All eyes are fixed on him. And then he says, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. That should fill you with joy. Amen. That should fill you with joy. That should fill you with happiness. You should be smiling. You should be jumping. You should be mad. This is a beautiful thing today. Woo! I was here for this. I was here to hear this. Man, you read about yourself? Woo! To many, that was absurd. Mm. Didn't expect that one, did you? Because if you continue on with that one, they tried to throw him out. They was trying to kill him. The joy of the world. The one who is the prince of peace. He's the bright morning star, the alpha and the omega, beginning and the end. Him, same one. The same one his advent time is for. See, listen. He came and he spoke to his people. That were held captive. Understand what's going on at this time. Let me, let me, if you don't mind for a moment, say amen if I can do this. Amen. All right. Amen. Israel is in occupation at this time by the Roman government. So they are captives. They are held captive. So Jesus comes and he goes to the scripture in Isaiah that is talking about him. And he reads. And this one part, this one part is beautiful because he, he says to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. In other words, Jesus came to bring you <clears throat> joy, freedom, release from bondage. Mm -hmm. They thought physically he came spiritually. Hence the reason that the word came to his own, mm -hmm. but his own received him. That's why it would seem absurd to some. Because when you looked at Jesus, there was nothing about Jesus that screamed out, this dude is going to do something. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. There's nothing of him. There was nothing. He didn't have the big, you know, she wasn't swole, he wasn't walking around. Uh, yeah. He wasn't doing that. Okay. You know, he, he wasn't out there, look at me, I'm a sick. No, he wasn't doing that. That wasn't happening. What was happening, however, was that he came mm -hmm. and he was bringing liberty. He was bringing peace. 
He was bringing love. He was bringing hope. He was bringing joy to those who did not have joy because they were held under bondage, religious bondage, because there were things being added to what was, what was actually being put concrete in God's word. You see, what happened was, is that God made crystal clear how you worship him, how you approach him, how you show that you love him. God made it crystal clear. You do this, you don't do this. And if you don't do this, you don't have to do any of this stuff over here. See, let me just bring something to your attention, if I can for a moment. You see, the whole point of the law was that when you looked at the law, you would say, I better stay straight, because if I have to follow everything in this law, just for forgiveness, it's easier for me not to sin. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason. It's a lengthy law. For salvation, there are many hoops that you have to get, you have to go through in order to be forgiven. Spotless lambs, mm -hmm. spotless doves. You had to find stuff that didn't have any blemishes on it. Because in order, to, in order to be forgiven, it had to not have any spots or blemishes on them. It had to be worthy, yeah. right. acceptable for what you were asking for. And that's just the sacrifice. That's not the person asking for it. <laughs> See, the person asking for it, they got to have a heart that wants repentance. They got to have a heart that needs to be right. They have to have a heart that's calling out, I need salvation. You've been held in bondage, spiritually, physically. You have religious leaders that every single day, as they're going through, they are imposing upon you all of these things that are not true in the word, that are not found in the gospel, that are not found. And here is one who comes, and he is shedding light on the hypocrisies that are being put against the law, that are being put against the people. He is looking at them that are in bondage and are held down because of what's going on, and he comes to bring liberty for you. And he says, today, this has been fulfilled in your hearing, and there are people who think this is absurd. This is wrong. Joy has come today. See, there are those that may be in here today that something is trying to steal your joy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a friend named Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He came to bring liberation to those who are held in bondage. And those that are trying to steal your joy, those that are trying to steal your joy, the things that are trying to steal your joy, the things that are calling your joy of your salvation, that are calling for that to be removed from you today, I am telling you there is one who has come. Amen. He will restore unto you the joy of your salvation brings liberation for those that are held in bondage. That brings you joy. That's why we have joy today. Joy is overwhelming. It is overflowing. It flows from his throne. And the thing is today, all you got to do is choose him. We continue on. To know that deliverance is available and it is found in Jesus. Hear these words that the angel sing at his birth. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. If you do me a huge favor, if you have your Bible with you, and if you have never underlined Luke 4, 17, 17 through 21, underline it, circle it, put hearts by it, underline, put, highlight that bad boy, put blue stars, green, green clovers, uh, moons, whatever it is you do, heart kisses, things, whatever. Whatever it is, you remember that way. Please underline that bad boy. Please underline that one. Remember that fact. Do whatever it is. Luke chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angel had gone, angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, 
which the Lord has made known to us. Amen. Jesus is the proclaimer of joy. See, when Jesus is reading from the passage in Luke chapter 4, when he's reading from, uh, we're, see, when we're reading in Luke chapter 4, but when he's reading from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, what he's actually reading is, is he's reading this. He's reading this same fact. He is saying that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what Jesus was reading from in Isaiah. Key thing. Isaiah has been dead and gone for a long time. So to know that the one you were talking about, good God, the one you were talking about, the one that God told you is coming, the one who will bring joy, the one who will bring peace, the one who will be the lover of your soul is one day going to go and in the synagogue he is going to open that scroll and he's going to read those words. Amen. Uh -huh. yes, yes. <clears throat> These are called messianic passages. They are passages that bring you to the knowledge of who the Messiah is. Because only the Messiah would look for that spot because that's where you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus reads from that spot. Mm -hmm. It's a coincidence. Quinky dink, oh, some would say. Yeah. You know, just, it just happens. It's just happenstance. <laughs> I want to tell you of a book. There's a book. It's called The Case for Christ. It's written by an author named Lee Strobel. Now, Lee Strobel, who is a dear brother in the Lord now, but at the time that he started writing this book, this man was a devout atheist. He's a devout atheist. Matter of fact, let me take you this way, dear sister. He went to the point to where he was going and writing this book for the sole purpose to discredit Christ. That's the whole reason he was writing this book. And during the course of this book, as he continued to go down the trail, he took a sabbatical from his job just to go to disprove God. And in the course of doing that, he came to the overwhelming truth that not only is God real, but that his word is true. Because everything he went to find, it was there. And everything he went he sought after, he found. And when he found that truth, it was overwhelming to the point that he gives his life to Christ. And he is one of the biggest advocates today for Christ. How much so? There's the case for Christ. There's a case for Christmas. He even wrote another book in regards to that. He's got more books that are on there. This man goes and he is proclaiming the truth of who Jesus is. But before, remember, when we first started, he would have been one of the ones saying it's absurd. Right, right, right. You mean joy came into the world? It's absurd. He'd have been one of the ones trying to kill him. Yeah. Let's take it even further. We thought it was absurd. We thought it was absurd. How many years have you lived without the knowledge of who Jesus is? How many years have you walked in opposition of him? And then when you came to the saving knowledge of who Jesus is, when you surrendered your life to him, trust me, then Lee Strobel wrote a beautiful book but that does not even compare to the novel that is your life. Because when people read or hear your story, when they hear you proclaim about why you have joy, about why the love of God overflows in your life, of why you have hope every morning when you wake up, when God allows you to wake up in the morning and you jump out of bed. Yes, yeah, some of us, we slide. We electric slide out of bed. But when we get up and we are ready to go, why do we have that? Why do we have that peace, that knowledge, that understanding?
understanding that you know what? No matter what comes up this day, I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It is because the story that you have starts with him and ends with him. You see, it begin, he's your beginning. He is your end. He is your strength. He is the one that carries you through this all. Church, if I could preach to you this morning, if I could testify to you this morning, let me say this to you. There is joy found in Jesus. We need to live like there is joy found in Jesus. Hope is found in him. Peace is found in him. Do you understand that we live in a world today that is searching for joy, that is searching for hope? We have churches today we have churches today that carries God's name mm-hmm. on their building, mm-hmm. but they carry deep hate in their heart. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. We need to look like his people. Mm-hmm. You hear me, Sierra? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. We need to look like his people. Amen. We need to act like his people. We need to act like him. Yeah. It's easy know. for us to say. Mm-hmm. It's even easier for us to do. But see, the thing is, is here's where it gets hard. You say, how is it easy for me to do? Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus every day. You say, that's easy to do. I choose Jesus every day. Here's the hard part. Walk it out. Live it out. That's where it gets hard. When we put rubber to roll, that's where that gets difficult. I can say anything from there. Dude, I do all that. I did all that. Okay, here's a fishing pool. Go fishing. Uh, how this work again? You do the whole pole in there. I thought that's how you fish. No, in my love, the fish is out there throwing a sandwich back to the shore, and I'm the one trying to run at it. Hey, I'm just telling the truth. Okay. Yeah. okay. Knowing this little fish out there, thank you for this bountiful bounty. <laughs> Jesus is the proclaimer of joy. That's right. Yeah. I wrote this note and I want to share this with you. Yeah. Keep this in mind. He could have been arrogant. He could have been prickly. Uh-huh. He could have been. He could have even been disrespectful. He is humble. He is joyful. He is the one proclaiming that salvation is available. That's Jesus. Aren't you glad that Jesus is proclaiming that there is hope today? Aren't you glad that in his life, through his life, from his life, you have joy? Aren't you glad that that from the throne flows grace? Aren't you glad you have grace today? That's what Advent is. Remember when we first started. Don't live like Advent is only in December. Don't live like that. Live that it is every day. Because when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, it is every day. Because the one who is hope, who is love, who is joy, who is peace, lives in you every single day. And out of your life should flow Advent. It should flow. Because people say, look, we're talking about a baby. No, you're talking about my Savior. Uh You're talking about my Savior. You say, why? Because you see, I want to back up if I can. I don't have this in my notes. But God is saying, back this up. There you go. What does Jesus' name mean? Jehovah saves us. That he will save his people. From their sins. God will save his people Amen. from their sins. Yeah. Let me read this again. Mm-hmm. Um, this is Luke chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. Keep in mind what Jesus' name means. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. He was handed the book Mm -hmm. of the prophet Isaiah. Hold on. 
a second. What does Jesus' name mean? God will save his people from their sins. He was handed the book of Isaiah. They handed God himself his words that he spoke to Isaiah. That's what his name means. Jehovah saves us. God will save his people from their sins. Yeah. When he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant sat down in the eyes of all who were in the synagogue fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture times where the Trinity makes its appearance and you just read it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Son is reading to the people and the Father gave the words to Isaiah. And today all three are in your presence and it is read to you today. When you stop and think about the awesomeness of God in that moment, when you stop and think about who Jesus really is, man, does it not give you joy? Aren't you glad when stuff starts to unlock in your mind and just, it just, it just, wow. That's what I am with God. I am wild with God. I am floored with him. And why am I floored with him? I am floored in the love and adoration and understanding that God, you love me so much that you gave your only son to die on the cross for my sins. And I'm guilty. I'm guilty of sin. He's not. But that you deem me worthy for salvation, that you love me in spite of the sin I'm doing. Listen, people, he loves you in spite of the sin you're doing. Why do you think every single time that someone has come in contact with him, he gives them this message, go and sin no more? Because the love of God and the understanding of what God is doing for you should be so much that it should cause you not to sin anymore. Hence the reason God originally gave the people of Israel the law. Amen. I love you so much. I don't want you to have to go through this process in order to be forgiven for me. Instead, what I want you to do is I want you to walk in the knowledge of who I am, to walk in the promise of who I am, to speak to a rock and water will come out. Don't strike it. Go into the promise I have for you. Trust in me. Believe in me. Lay your, lay your faith in me. Hallelujah. I will not fail you. That is what he's telling you. Yeah. Why are we hard-headed? <laughs> That's the age-old question. 
I stand in front of the two. Why you do that? Uh, okay. It's the sky blue. Yeah, well, that's why I did it. It was blue. <laughs> Let's turn to John chapter 4, verses 21 through 26. And when you turn to John, this should be a familiar passage for you. If it's not, underline it, circle it, put blue stars, green hearts, purple clovers, all that other good stuff you do. Whatever it is you, re you remind yourself. You're going to hear me say that a lot. So. Did you have a few charts for breakfast? You know, no, I did not. <laughs> but that is such a great marketing tool that I was just like, oh, I want some purple hearts, blue clover, green stars. They know that's just pure sugar. That's why I want it. Why that boy sleep? He's so pretty. No, he just sleep. We get to John chapter 4, and as we get to John chapter 4, verses 21 through 26, it reads as follows. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will let us, he will tell us all things Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. <laughs> that should give you joy. Boy, joy should be overflowing. If you haven't caught on to what I've been throwing down, there is something wrong. Because joy is abounding today. You understand what's happening here. These people have had opportunities to see God face to face. Yeah. They walked with him face to face. The disciples, they ate with Jesus. They laughed with Jesus. They, they, they probably, I know football wasn't around here, but they played something similar with Jesus. We know that Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. He played with them. He had fun with them. He cracked jokes. He lived. What was the thing about Jesus? He was here. Amen. Yeah. It is no lie that he was here. Yeah. How do we know? John will finish this book by saying that if you were to write down all the things that Jesus ever did, there are not enough books yeah. that could contain right. all that he did. Amen. You wouldn't have enough books. Mm. Jesus was with us. That's right. But he is with us. And everybody look up here. Mm -hmm. And he will be with you. When you choose him. You see, he was. He is. And he is to come. God in three persons. Yeah. And just to know that that one loves you. Yeah. Amen. That should move heaven and earth in your life. Yeah. That should cause you that every time that you wake up in the morning and every single time that you think about Jesus, every time that you sing the song, Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Shall all pass away, but there's 
something about that name. You should have joy. You should just break out in that song every day. You should break out in that song without having to be prompted for it. Because when your mind goes back to what Jesus did for you, when your mind goes back to all that God promised, when your mind goes back to all that God still has to do, yes. see, he's not done. Yeah. Right. See, the means for salvation, it's done. But see, the thing that's not done is your life. Your life is not done. So the experiences that God is getting ready to walk you through and lead you through and guide you through, there are still so many that he still has to do. Yes. And the beautiful thing about this is, see, when you choose to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you gain. You don't lose, you gain. What do you gain? See, if you've never had a father, if you've never had a physical father, See, one of the beautiful things that God gives you is he gives you a family. That's right. So in Christ, we who are many form uh, yeah. one body, and each member belongs to all the others. If I am of knowledge and of wisdom, and if I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and if you were to deem me worthy to be a father in the faith to you, you have a father. If you do not have a mother, God has given you the ability to have a mother. If you don't, if God has, has for, for some reason, you are not able to have children, let me tell you this beautiful thing. There are children that come to this church. Embrace them like they are your children. Love them like they are your children. Because when the, when the sun rises and when it sets, Please be at prayer for your children. Be at prayer for those that God has put on your heart. Why? Because we are a family. Let us act like it. If you say that Jesus is the savior of your soul, if you say that he is the leader of your life, live like it. Stop playing church. Listen, Sierra Baptist got to stop playing church. Yes. We got to be. Because this world, this community needs to hear of Jesus. That's right. This community needs to know that Jesus is real. Amen. We are in here. We know the truth of who Jesus is, but they are searching for it. And the saddest part is, is are they driving by this place every single day yeah. going to search for Jesus in all these wrong places knowing that we are right here and can right. proclaim that truth. All right. mm -hmm. We are to be a city on a hill. Yeah. A light shining in the darkness so that those okay. who are searching for the truth will see it. That's what Jesus came to proclaim. He came to proclaim joy. Do you have joy in your life? Yes, Lord. Our community Lord. needs to know it. Our community needs to hear. We have all these beautiful hymns that we sing. We have the word of God, which is right here. But if those that are perishing never hear it, it does them no good. They're listening to everybody else, but they are not listening to Jesus. Yeah. And guess what? what? Are they listening to you? Because if they're coming to you and asking you questions, if they asking you about, how'd you make that casserole that was so good? Tell them about Jesus yeah. while you give them the instructions about the casserole. Or if you're working on your house, man, you know, I'm, I'm doing like, like my brother back there. He's, you know, been working on his house right there. And the people come over, his neighbors come over. Man, what you doing over there? You know what? God is amazing because he's yeah. allowed me to do this amazing thing. Man, what did he allow you to do? Boy, he woke me up this morning. I could have been dead. This house could have been on the market to somebody else. But God saw it to wake me up this morning. Put breath in my nostrils. Let me walk out this door. Put my clothes on after I realize I walked out without them. But the whole point is, God has allowed me to be able to see a brand new day and during this brand new day, with every single step I make, with every single breath I take, every word that comes out of my mouth is going to be about my Savior. Because I'm being about my Father's business. That's what we're called to do. That's what we need to do. That's what we have to do. Yes. Yes. See, our community, they don't know. Yeah. They're searching. 
you're lost. You see, you can be saved and still lost. You say, what? You can say you saved, but you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said you can tell the tree by its fruit. So if the fruit of your life is not bringing to the, to the forefront the fact of who God is, when you look at someone's life and you see nothing but, nothing but, but leaves, see, a tree can look real pretty, but if it has no sustenance coming from it, if it looks like an apple tree, but ain't no apples coming off of it, or if it looks like an orange tree, but there's no orange coming off of it, if you're looking at a grapevine, but there are no grapes coming off of it, then what would you say about that vine? And what would you say about that tree? That they're not producing. That they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. That they're not active. That they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They are not about their purpose. You see, it should never be said of the body of Christ that we are not about our Father's business. Sadly, though. Sadly, though. We are fighting more inside than we're fighting outside. Church, we have a leader, and he's given us marching orders, and we need to be about them. We need to be about them. Friends, loved ones, beloved and faithful. You have joy in your life. God has given you a joy to do so much. He's given us permission. Go ye therefore into the world and make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them all that I've taught you. And go yeah, with yeah. you always, mm -hmm. even to the end of the world. You see, the fact is, Jesus has said, I'm with you. Jesus said, I also will send one who will be a comforter to you and that will speak to you on my behalf. That's the Holy Spirit. It dwells within you. See, when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, this is real. But today we have a lot of people that are claiming that they have a relationship with Jesus Christ. They're claiming that they're saved and they're not saved. That's what I meant by that. So if there's anybody that might have taken that and said, oh, you said something wrong, that's why I took the time out to explain that to you because I don't want no one leaving here with the misconception that they're saved because that's one of the biggest problems happening in our churches today is a lot of people believe because they walked through the door, sat through the sermon, touched a couple hands, hugged a couple people, that they're saved. Mm -hmm. Freak, sister. It don't work that way. You gotta have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It starts and it ends with Him. The Samaritan woman was not expecting this encounter. But more than that, she wasn't expecting His answer. She wasn't expecting that. See, there's something else. When we came back to Luke chapter 2, 13 to 15, look what happened. When the shepherds heard the angel singing, heard the message from the angel, what did they do next? Did they stay where they were? They left everything. I said it right. Everything. Them sheep, they stabbed, they stood, and they moved. Because what they had seen was so amazing. Yeah. And it filled them with so much joy. And it filled them with so much hope. Mm -hmm. And it was something that they, lonely shepherds, should have never seen. You see, guys, let me tell you something amazing. You see, God has allowed you to see something that we're not worthy to see. Our eyes should not even see it. But God has deemed us worthy that the angels have proclaimed his truth. That we have a stage that is full of this beauty and splendor. It screams of the majesty of who Jesus is. We sung songs a couple, couple minutes ago proclaiming the awesomeness and the power of God. And that we, we know that he came into the world as a babe. That he lived and he grew up. And as he grew up, he continued to be about his father's business. As he was about his father's business and he started his ministry, we know that he touched lives. He had men that walked with him, 12 men, one that would betray him. We know that this fact is true, that he walked with them. How
how do we know it's true? Because out of those ones that walked with him, see the one, he hung himself. under the sheer magnitude of the knowledge of what he did, but he never once asked for forgiveness. John writes this in 1 John. But if you will confess your sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive you of all unrighteousness. Salvation is available today. But are we willing to ask for it? We have an invitation hand we send all the time. Jesus is tenderly called. He's tenderly called. Mm -hmm. When does his tenderly calling stop? See, when we leave here today, he's still tenderly called. Yes. Amen. When you're driving down the highway, he's still tenderly calling. When you lay your head down at night, he's still tenderly calling. When you open up your eyes in the morning, if God allows for him to still be tenderly calling, he is still tenderly calling. You see, he is calling for you today. Jesus is tenderly calling. He is tenderly calling. Joy is calling out today. There are those that are searching for joy. I'm here to let you know I found it. It's found in Jesus. Amen. Those are searching for hope today. I found hope. Yeah. It's found in Jesus. Yeah. There are those that need love today. Oh, yes. I found it. It's found in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. There are those that need peace today. I found it. Yeah. It's found in Jesus. Yeah. You see, what you're looking for is found in the Savior. All you got to do is go to him. All you got to do is ask him. He's tenderly called. When we continue in this story, we see the effects of the joy she has. The town comes and sees what she's talking about. And they come to the same knowledge Jesus Christ. You see, that town knew that the Samaritan, they knew her past. They knew who she was. They knew everything about her. They knew she was going to heal. They knew. They gossiped about her. They watched her when she got her, her water at the noon day, hottest part of the day. They knew. They scorned at her. They laughed at her. They said what they said. But see, this woman came in contact with salvation itself. And when she came in contact with the one who was the lover of her soul, who looked at her and told her what she did, but then also told her salvation is available today. Well, I know when the Messiah comes, and he going to do that. Man, I, I just can't wait. I, I hope I see him. The one you were talking about is here. What did she do? Girl left that water pot. I don't care who the fastest person on earth is. You say both might think he fast, but this woman was fast. Because how did I know she fast? She got to that town and she started screaming about what Jesus just told her. Yeah. It takes a strong person to admit when they've done wrong. Yeah. Amen. And what's the words that come out of mouth? He told me about it. It takes a strong person to admit their sins and their faults. But when a person comes and tells you, this man told me all of my faults. He told me all of my wrongs. He told me everything that I've done. He told me everything that had been, that had been wrong in my life. But he also told me that salvation is found in him. That it is found in him. That hope is found in him. True worshipers will worship in spirit and truth, and that he is the gateway through that. That he's the one that proclaimed that truth. When she ran back and told them, it was so infectious. It had them in such curiosity that they came to find out for themselves. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to listen to her. But it was such, it was so compelling. 
Because this woman had, who had avoided people was avoiding them because of who she was, because of what she had done, is the one that is heralding for the Savior. I have found where salvation is. And he is here today. He is calling today. The Apostle Paul writes about this joy that goes beyond all understanding. See, in Romans, in Romans, this, this, uh, there's this, this road, this pathway that leads us to joy. But hear these verses. If you've never underlined these verses, circled these verses, put some hearts, stars, clovers, you know, purple moons, all the other good stuff you have. Put that on these. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Wait, I said joy. Why am I talking about that? It's important to know where you stand. Right. It's important to know where you stand. Yeah. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I have an important thing for you. Read down from 3.23 all the way to verse 26. You'll understand. Because Paul lays it out. But we can continue on because that's the good stuff. Romans 5 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You look at these, you say, man, what is this? Here's the thing, for the wages of sin is death. If Paul stopped there, guess what? There's no hope. But have you, have, you, have you caught on to the overwhelming theme that comes out of these verses? See, the overwhelming theme that comes, see, 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 this said, see, it's that but that's in there. And what it is is that, see, that is the hinge word that tells you that, see, it doesn't stop just there. Yeah. You see, Christ realizes our plight. How do I know he realizes our plight? Because in the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was with God. In the beginning. Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. That's why he was, he is, and he is to come. That's why he is. That's why joy overflows in you. It shouldn't bubble in us. It should be like a volcano. It should be like when Mount St. Helens blew the top off. Because it should be that overwhelming thing that you saw. Matter of fact, let me tell you something about Mount St. Helens. Do you know that before Mount St. Helens blew, it was one of the top, cleanest tops? It was, it was beautiful. People went there all the time. And when it blew that crater off, man, it didn't even look like the same thing. Yeah. Guess what? That's our lives. You see, so many times we try to make ourselves look pretty. We try to make ourselves look beautiful. We try to make ourselves, you know, look all nice and, 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 and you know, dolled up and there ain't nothing wrong with me. Let the Savior get all of it. Let him start talking about the faults that you have. Let him start really looking in. See, he don't look at the surface. He looks to your heart. When he gets there, what is he going to see? What's he got to say? See, I love God. You know why? He's my favorite mechanic. Because it don't matter what's wrong with this car, he can fix it. He can fix it. Don't matter with the troubles. I got a lot of miles on me. He can fix it. Boy, my, my struggle's a little rough. I'm shaking a little bit. He can fix it. You know? I don't speak right. He can fix it. I know people that stutter really, really bad. One of them is a dear brother in the faith. I love Bill Gilbert. A man is, is a dear brother in Christ. 
He stutters really, really bad. But you know what? That doesn't stop him from proclaiming the truth of who Jesus is. And that hasn't stopped him from proclaiming that truth and for people hearing it. He has one of the most beautiful singing voices that you've ever heard. You see, the thing about that is this. See, it doesn't matter what the, what the limitations might be. I will not let that stop me from the goal that God has put on my heart and on my life. I have a vision, and I'm seeing this for this church. You know what it is? That you won't let the things that might be a hindrance to you, that might be a, a stopping point for you, stop you. That you will go forward in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That you will walk strong and triumphant in his name. Yeah. Why? Because that's what we're called to do. That's what we're called to do. We are called to be his people. Because his son's name is written on our hearts. And by it being there, this is the promise that God gave to you through his son, Jesus Christ. And you shall be my people. And I shall be your God. You have a personal relationship with the man. You have a relationship with the one who dug out the seas, set the mountains, put each star in the sky, knows every one of them by name. You have a relationship with the one who is the owner of the cattle a thousand years. You are the one who is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. You are the one who is your strong tower and you run into and are safe. You are the one that he is your banner. You are the one that he is your provider. He's your defender. Amen. God is not your enemy. But he is the one who comes to bring you joy Amen. and peace. So how can we know this for you? <clears throat> First, know that salvation is only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, it says, Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven <clears throat> and of those on the earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. In John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. So my answer to you today is this. Choose Jesus today. In conclusion, I'll leave you with one verse. I know I've thrown a lot at you today. You can highlight and underline and circle it like crazy. But please underline and circle this one. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, salvation is found in Jesus. Hope is found in Jesus. Yeah. Love is found in Jesus. Yeah. And joy is found in Jesus. Yeah. Advent is not just one time. It is every day. May we live, act, and walk that way. Let's pray. 
the gracious heavenly Father.